last video was quite theoretical, but this will be a blast for hardware engineers. As you saw at the start, this is this presentation will allow you how to create a realistic laser scanner in Blender, and also one which is supposed to work. So on the left, you see the process I went over for this design. So I started out with a sketch in Inkscape. I then designed the electrical boards in KiCad. I made a CAD design in FreeCAD, and you also see an optical render of, of some of the rays, uh, which will go through the prism for different positions. And then finally, you see a realistic render in Blender. So I will go over the KiCad first, then the FreeCAD design, and then finally the rendering. Uh, has a brief recap on the process. So the idea is that you place the laser head on top of a Cartesian stage, for instance, something from a 3D printer. And here you see an older laser head, older version of the laser head. And then by moving it in a snake-like pattern, you can expose a substrate. And then with several chemical steps, you can create a printed circuit board. And if you want to uh, look into the design, here the electrical design is shared. Uh, so you can find on GitHub, the hardware design is also there. The rendering, um, yeah, so, so that is just one file and that will be shared via my Hackaday page. Uh, so you can look for laser prism scanner. You can find that here, there. And then there is also a plugin which I use to create these rays. And you can find that here, but this is quite hard to install. So uh, be careful. The electrical design is made in KiCad, and here I opened up the baseboard. Huh? So this is the main board of the laser head. As always, I start out with a schematic. Huh? So you have a schematic where you lay out all your components. Um, so you have the, the FPGA, uh, which also has a LED light, so you can also look how, how that's going. Um, you can get some signals out of there. And then here uh, in the laser head, uh, you find most of the components to control the, the actual laser scanner. So this is used to, to send pulses to the laser uh, diode. And the position of the prism is measured using hull sensors and using a photodiode. Huh? So, so the laser will also give a trigger to the photodiode and that you can use to measure the position. Now, another way to measure the position would be to use the back. EMF uh, from the printed circuit board uh, motor, uh, but but I, I went for this option because it seemed easier. Uh, and then here you have the printed circuit board, uh, the driver for the printed circuit board motor, and this, this sends out pulses. Uh, so you can determine which coil is activated. Um, well, if we look at the board, so so once you've skip, you fix the schematic, you can run some checks, and here you can also run some checks. Uh, so, so whether this uh, meets the design rules and uh, if you have done everything well, uh, you, you end up with the board without mistakes. Um, and then you can look at that in the 3D viewer. Here you see the complete computer animated design in FreeCAD. So my setup is as followed. I installed these add-ons, Assembly 4, Fastener Workbench and the KiCad Step-Up Workbench. Um, and here you see the entire laser head. So I just discussed the main board. Uh, and now you see also the PCB motor, which is placed on top. Uh, you see the prism and you see the two cylinder lenses. Um, and so these are optional and are they enable you to circleize the laser beam and also remove some of the uh, aberrations you might have that due to that the facets are, are different and the prism is mounted not perfectly. Um, yeah, so I removed them in an earlier version, but actually, personally, I like the option to add them, and that's why I, uh, I, I placed them back. So you can remove them or add them. Uh, so, so that is a decision you can make, but I wanted to add that option. Um, and so the design is quite simple. Um, and so you ju just design parts. Uh, for instance, uh, the... Um, uh, the prism is just a, a sketch which you which you pad, uh, so so that is that is a typical uh, KiCad or the FreeCAD method. 
uh, and the scan hat PCB hat, this is more complicated. What I now typically do is I start out with a sketch, right? Uh, so I start out with a sketch in, uh, in FreeCAD. And then one, once the sketch is complete, I push it back to the, uh, to the board. And so it's pushed to, uh, to KiCad. And so you can push here the sketch to the board, which is not able because we are viewing the sketch. As, so that is how it's done. And then also what I've done is I have um, parameterized some of the, uh, some of the uh, settings. Uh, so uh, what you see here is that this is actually set via box slit length, um, which is determined, uh, let's close this, uh, which is determined, board, uh, which is determined in this schema. So here you can change some of the parameters and then the box should uh, adapt itself uh, or it should crash. Huh? So, so it, could, it can also definitely crash, uh, but, but that is the basic idea. And it, it does simplify the design to, to do that. Um, and then using the assembly for all these components are uh, placed together and you get the complete design. Uh, and then finally, I have a plugin, which I will not show, but I can install a custom plugin via the add-on manager and then I have one button in this plugin and I can create these arrays. And, and this plugin is quite buggy. So uh, yeah, I, I just use it to, to calculate these rays. And, and these rays are then for different positions of the prism. Eh? So, so here's a ray which goes directly. These are the ends of your scan line. And these are the, are the positions where your um, laser will start to hit the prism. Right, so once you've done this, um, and, and actually FreeCAD is still one of the most buggy programs. So there are two things um, I still have an issue with. Sometimes if you change the design, uh, this could break. And this, this, these components start to move out of the body. Um, yeah, th that, that, is, that, is in, that is an issue. Uh, if that happens, you have to go back to an older version and, and sort of make sure you're, you're not having that. Uh, don't store it. Um, so so, so that's, that's an issue. It happens sometimes. It also gives quite a lot of warnings that something is not in working. And then it starts to create extra parts, which you have to remove. Uh, and then uh, it also gives this warning. Um, yeah, but, but I, I spoke to the maintainer and he said it was not an issue. And at the moment, it still works. I mean, it's it's a nuisance, but it's not, not a big one. Uh, so once you have done that, you can uh, export your model to Blender. So what I don't do is I don't select the... Um, so for instance, I would select the magnets, right? Uh, and of course, there are more things to select. But I don't select the PCBs. The PCBs are exported differently by this plugin in KiCad. Uh, the other the other components are exported by selecting them and then you can click export uh, and then you can export them as a object file a wavefront object file uh, so that's how they are exported the lenses has so the cylinder lenses i use an even different uh, procedure so these two lenses have for that i use stl so in my preferences in the part design, in the shape view, have first I decrease the tolerances, so I have a really tight bounding box, and have a very high density uh, STL, and that I use to export the lenses. Otherwise, your lenses will not be good enough in uh, Blender, and of course they are still not that good, but uh, they're good enough for for a rough simulation. Uh, so, so that that is how the design is made and how the uh, link is made with Blender. So let's look at my setup in in Blender. Um, here, you can see which plugins or add-ons I installed. So I installed the Luke Score render. I installed the PCB to Blender importer. Uh, so, so that is for the bridge between KiCad and uh, Blender. And the Luke Score render is 
used to simulate the laser. Um, right. And then I import the PCBs via the PCB 3D add on. And I do not rasterize, but use the 3D depreciated option because that is much faster. And the data from uh, FreeCAD is imported via um, an object, a wavefront object file, where I also have the option that I split by object. This can also be done later, but then uh, each object uh, gets its own uh, name. And you can also select it then, uh, so, so that, that makes it quite easier. So here you see the, uh, the laser hat, um, right? Which is on a plane, and this plane is the floor. So let's look at the scene. So at the background, you also see the high dynamic range image, which is applied to, to give you uh, more realistic lighting. Uh, I actually also included four point slides, which uh, lighted um, here. Let's turn off the laser for the moment. So, uh, so here you see a point light and here another point light. So, so that is how you get the uh, laser scanning going. And yeah, I think it gives you a very good look and feel on, on how it works. Um, and you can also turn on the cylinder lenses. And so of course you can simply turn on cylinder lenses. Um, yeah, are there some other things I should mention? Uh, so here you see the uh, dope menu. So I think uh, this is animated, of course. Uh, so I, I, I inserted keyframes. That's also done for the uh, laser. Um, what's important to know for the laser is that it is set up in uh, Luke's core render. So if we go to the render settings and then, um, yeah. I, yeah, so the gain here is zero. So here the gain is uh, is much higher. And actually I changed the gain. So if it's um, with with an atmosphere, I have a gain of uh, of this gain and otherwise I use a gain of 10,000. Uh, so, so that is a bit tricky. In the final video, you'll also see the laser propagating through the air. And that is because I added a volume to the scene. So you add a volume uh, where is that? Yeah, so I added a workshop volume. Uh, oh. So let's let's go to that. So I added a workshop volume. Where is it? Um, which here is disabled. But uh, yeah, I use an index of scattering of one, scattering scale of 0 0.05, and, and you have to tune that with your laser. If, if it's not good, you get an overexposure. Um, as so for some of the renders, I also visualize the final laser bundle by putting a, a sheet of paper in front of it, which is uh, this plane here. So, so this is a sheet of paper, uh, but, but th that produces so much scattering that with the atmosphere it gets almost all, all blue.